What up my freaks, Ruin Sensei here with part 28 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Imric Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, we had the Lothurn Skycutters debut at last, and they were pretty darn cool in battle. Uh, they were being able to essentially wreck single targets, inflict massive amounts of casualties on an enemy army while it approached us, and it was Grimgore's army at that, and then of course uh, go into melee and obliterate any range units that were a threat to them. Uh, so it's a pretty cool unit, and I'm excited to to uh, see more of them in action with Feyadin as soon as she uh, goes over here to take this army. Plus, we got to see the growers, but uh, uh, the uh, Lothurn, or uh, Lower Masters of Hoeth, rather, in action against Grimgore. And though it took a little bit of a while for them to bring him down between all their spell work, uh, they were able to spirit leech him while keeping themselves up and running. And we got more growers on the field. Eventually, once they're no longer needed, we'll probably pop them in an army, but uh, yeah, for now. Uh, anyway, uh, in terms of what we got to do this time. We'll probably be wiping out Scarbrand's faction for good as we will want to uh, get that defeat trait or not defeat trait. Well, actually we would want to get his defeat trait, but it's the victory condition the long victory with 25 diplomatic relations, allegiance points gained from all factions and campaign movement range in own territory. We're really going to need it because we've got, once again, a lot of enemies bordering us and clearly they've started showing up in places where we don't currently have armies like with Grimgore last episode so yeah I gotta deal with it anyway uh let's begin Imric and we'll start with you and you know at the end of the day while it would be really nice to fight Scarbrand I think we're just looking at Imric's stats I don't think anybody's under any kind of illusions as to what would happen if the two were to uh, fight it out and I'm not willing to have him sit here for potentially like five turns just to uh, and just to wait for him at the end of the day if we wanted to we could always attack Kemri and have Imric fight Setra which uh, would be uh, fairly interesting as well we probably will also want to not out the uh, uh, these guys, the uh, followers of Nagash. Maybe grab the buried buried caravan Sarai as well for ourselves because the Great Desert of Araby is not too bad of a of a landmark. All before we start again warring against the massive empire of uh, Skaven here. Anyway, uh, Imrek, you're just gonna take this. Uh, go into noble prestige and then go for Gorgazan and auto resolve it. And of course, it'll kill off some chariots, but doesn't everything and uh, occupy. All right, and for Pigeon Plucker Pendant, sure, Barrier Idols are now ours, and I guess we'll keep them. They are still green territories, after all. There's got to be a limit to how much territory we'll want to take for ourselves, so maybe anything south of it we don't bother with, because it's all yellow territory down here. Maybe we'll take the Black Pyramid. I will think about that. Depending on what's over there, it might be a, a pretty good fight that's uh, worthy of our attention. But anyway, a rebuild Lost Splendor here, and I guess Def Gorge, you can go for the manor as well. We don't really have much in the way of money, but uh, at least enough for that. Recruiter Fern Harvest, you don't have enough money to recruit this turn, unfortunately. Tell Nye. Now, you should probably... Ooh, hello. Astrogoth. Uh, Alistar. You can't quite reach these guys, can you? Wait, what about in regular stance? No, you can't quite reach these guys. Hmm. And we do want to lay another Mage of Beasts in your army, but uh, nonetheless, I think we'll pop you into encamp stance, not an ambush, and then pop you right to the edge of this territory. We'll see how Astrogoth and Co. react. If they all go for you, I will be, uh, I'd be pretty happy to see it. But if they don't, well, then you can hopefully attack them together with Elena next turn. Let's level up your Noble just in case it happens. Also, what do you have? A Shrieking Blade. I mean, he can hold on to it for now. Probably not super necessary, but uh, we will change it up maybe. Also got to try to get one of these crushing nobles for uh, for Tyrion. It'll be really nice, uh, especially since he has uh, uh, especially he since he has a lot of cap. A blade shield for you, sir. And you're not in a chariot, are you? No, you're on your great eagle. You were following... Ah, should you actually be on your great eagle? That's a question. Uh, we can't put you on the chariot, and I... It looks like we still can't put Alistar on the White Lion Chariot. I think it might be broken, I'm not entirely sure, but maybe we'll see next turn. It would be a shame. And you have the option of using a, a Thilmar Chariot with the White Lion Chariots. We could have you lead them, in theory. Hmm. 
I guess the only issue then is we wouldn't have a single target assassin, especially if we don't put uh, Alistar. Well, I suppose we could put Alistar on the Star Dragon then, but then we wouldn't see him lay into his foes with his axe. I don't know, I'll think about it. For now, we'll uh, leave him where he is. It's El Nye, back to you. I think it's time to start attacking Sylvania. I don't think we have much of a choice in the matter, as it, uh, well, they are close to us, and they are looking to overrun Vissenland and Nuln, and we are here to save the Empire, after all. So, we will declare war on them. They're currently friends with Kemler. Are we at war with Kemler? I don't even know. We're at war with nearly everybody who... No, we're not at war with Kemler. But he doesn't like us very much, so I guess that's fine. Funnily enough, he is at war with a lot of the Chaos Factions. Looks like he's at war with Festus. Okay, maybe not a lot of the Chaos Factions, but he is at war with Festus. But he also has... wait. Oh. He's down to the one territory. Okay, he's no kind of threat anyway. Alright. Uh, let's go for you. Do we call our allies to help? I don't mean... we don't really care if, we, if they take any of their territory. I'm a little bit concerned about... Crack Kadrin. Hmm. They're already having a little bit of a tough time dealing with Throt the Unclean, but uh, nonetheless, it'll keep everybody liking each other as long as they're uh, as long as they're friends. Orion is also liable to take some territory here. Hmm. You know what? Wait, wait, wait. Let me just see here. Orion. One second. We gotta be careful with the diplomacy here. I would like to see who you're at war with. So you're at war with the Broken Axe. If we have you go out and start attacking the vampire counts, I guess there's a decent likelihood that it allows the Broken Axe to run rampant in Bretonia, which may not be such a good idea. Mm. Also, your army is kind of trash. On the other hand, this army is so trash that I think it wouldn't be able to help against uh, against anything anyway. All right, fine. We'll just have everybody attack you. Uh, call your allies to help. Go for it. And allies refused to help. Kemler didn't join them anyway. <laughs> well, actually, it doesn't list Kemler, but I think uh, yeah, I don't see Kemler's flag in the uh, in the little list here. And damn, we're at war with a lot of factions. We're at war with more factions than we're trading with. No, uh, it's close to the same, but we're trading with two more factions than we are at war with. Kind of interesting, though. A lot of powerful factions of that. All right, now until now, I would like you to kill off the Red Duke once we level you up. So. You have Dark in the Skies, I forget, were we starting to make you into a fighter now? We don't need Heart of Flame on you, we don't need a movable force, and we just have the Elothar and Seaguard, which don't, uh, which don't benefit from it. And then everything here is fine. I could get Elven Healing, but I think, finally, it's time to start going through Seeking Arrows. Try to get that Volley of High Arrows. I mean, I suppose we could also get Ward of Hoeth. You know what? Let's get one point in Ward of Hoeth. When fighting undead, we're, unli we're likely to encounter a lot of spirit leeching and the occasional gaze of Nagash, both of which could be a threat to a big old flying target. You, White Tower Sage, please. And lastly, okay, you have that hawkish precision, which is what we wanted out of you as in the main thing. I'm almost tempted to go for Retinue Quartermaster since we're going to be in a lot of corrupted territory. It's not like we're really expecting the Handmaidens to do damage. That's not what they're here for. They're mostly here for uh, uh, for buffs. Mm. On the other hand, another, what, 8%? Actually, no, it's more to like 12%. That's not horrible. Yeah, fine, just go for Red Quartermaster. Why not? Why not? It couldn't hurt, let's say. Anyway, go for the Red Duke. I expect he'll run. Let's see if he can run far enough away from us. And oh wow! Oh wow! He ran far. Uh, oh, we can oh one percent. We can just just reach him. Uh, I suppose we could go into Lilith's but You know what? I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna change stances. It's too. It's yeah. It's too risky. All right. Uh, he doesn't have much in the way of an army, but it is the Red Duke after all. So I think he warrants a fight. So we'll fight him. Go.
Alrighty, here we go. Poor, poor Red Duke. First he gets screwed by the devs by not being added as a legendary lord, and then he promptly gets screwed in this campaign by being forced onto a choke point battle against a almost all, well in fact all ranged army of Lothar and Seaguard and Illyrian Reavers. Um, but, well, that's his problem. Uh, we've gone forward and are firing away at the e balloons. Uh, firing away at the enemy Vargulf with our anti-large arrows of the Illyrian Reaver is not going to do a crazy amount of damage to it as long as that invocation of Nehek is up as it does combine with its uh, own regeneration. And... Hmm... Yeah, it's going to take a while. I'm, I'm, I'm just surprised, considering the Illyrian Reavers have been, uh, you know, sort of sniping things really, really well so far. But anyway, that's all good. We do a little bit of uh, work over on this side with Gehenna's Golden Hounds moving through the line of zombies, though the uh, Mormgols here are in fact hidden. Looks like a pile of Black Knights decide to charge on forth and do manage to close the distance with some Illyrian Reavers. Not so great for us as arrows will come down and, ooh, those lances will bring a few of the Reavers down as well. In fact, the Red Regiment of Renown. Granted, the Black Knights will begin a melting away and won't achieve much more than that, but nonetheless, good job to them. And back here, it looks like the enemy are still kind of milling around and not moving towards us, taking the occasional shot from our uh, from our handman. Out of curiosity, she's got six kills on her. Oh, wow. So she has no splash whatsoever on her arrows, I take it. That's a bit of a shame, but oh well. Looks like Red Duke has decided to charge forth at last, but as soon as he gets in range, his elites will get brought down. The Vargulf already gone under arrow fire. The Black Coach suffers the same fate. I hate to see it, but since we'll be doing a Manfred run relatively soon, I don't mind nearly as much. We'll take revenge for those elven arrows. Anyway, uh, Graveguard and moving forward shields up, but can they weather the storm in the manner of a Norskin to get towards our lines? It remains to be seen. Same thing happening or being repeated over on this side as a Manfred Massive horde of zombies are crossing the uh, ford here. And I think some of the Vargulfs are getting killed just by being present uh, where the arrows are coming down, as we still can't see them. Alrighty, well, it's still a, a pretty cool sort of crossing uh, that we've got going on here as the enemy attempts to uh, get towards us. If nothing else, the Morngulls will reach us. Can't really say the same for the Grave Guard and the zombies, as it looks like they are pretty much done. And are the, no, the Morgals are still hidden. They'll get there eventually. I do believe the Red Duke has actually managed to reach our lines, however, as I didn't tell everybody to focus him down. And a Banshee has made it forward as well. Well, good for them. Red Duke's down to about 30% of his HP, whacking away at our Lothar and Seaguard. And Attil and I moving in from the background. <laughs> That's a menacing uh, sort of saunter. That the uh, that the star dragon did there. Anyway, with the Tilnai moved in, and it looks like one bite from the dragon will bring down uh, the Red Duke. The Banshee will fade away under the gaze of the dragon as well. And with that, the battle will be ours. And it looks like the Morngulls actually foolishly decided to go for the Metal Mage, who uh, wasn't really too threatened by it. Lovely. Well done. All right, there we go. Easy little fight, minimal losses. Uh, the charge of the Black Knights did a, got five kills, but I'd wager that uh, we killed off... Well, actually, I was about to say we killed off more of our own units with friendly fire, but if they did manage to get five kills and three on the Banshee... Uh, that means they did more than friendly fire, so uh, good job to them. Uh, ransom the captives, please. Uh, Barded the Hillmar Steed, Forbidden Rod, and me killed in battle. Sadly, we get no defeat trait from defeating the Red Duke, but uh, oh well. Uh, and I do wonder whether Fyldorf will fall. It does have a fairly decent set of defenders here, so maybe we can keep it up and running if we help him out. I guess we'll see. Anyway, Fern Harvest, Harvest, uh, you are fine, though you would in fact have enough money to recruit now. If we wanted to, though I guess we do have to globally recruit you with you as well. How many units are we missing? So we have 13, counting the noble that isn't here yet, meaning we need seven more units. Two... Okay, we'd be able to recruit... Oh, 
<laughs> if we could do it in one turn, we could well do it in one turn. 50 NK, so we would be able to get the Eagle Claw Bolt throwers up and running like this. Uh, but we wouldn't have enough money to get the other Lothran Sea Guard up and running. I would like to do it in one turn if it's possible, and then just leave Fern Havas to recruit for Larithiel next, as we need more armies, pretty clearly. I'll think about it. Let's see if we have any uh, money, well, any possibility of getting any more money right now. Uh, Jay Adress and Curiella, you're kind of stuck where you are right now. The Demon Stump is not under threat by whatever the heck this guy's doing. Uh, so we'll ignore you, pop you into the Lilith's Blessing, and then stay right here. Both of you together. Most likely until Fadian gets here to take the Lothurn Skycutters, we could probably go out here and kill off Kolek. Just so we don't have to deal with him attacking us. He really doesn't like us for some reason. Can't imagine why, but anyway. Uh, Tyrion and Enthal. Now, neither of you have your completed stacks as of yet, but I think your stacks are completed enough to start moving out here into the Galleon's Graveyard. We gotta knock these guys out after all, so send you both there. Uh, Enthal, you should be replaceable with... Uh, and with the L'Oreal, I want to say next turn? I guess we'll see in a second. Sadly, no money to be gained this way. I see PT Sawfish there, but no Count Noctilus either. And anyway, I also won't, probably won't be able to defend the place. And ooh, we got, we got islands. Maybe I should have gone for the shipwreck. That might have given us enough cash. But oh well. Uh, we have another Admiral here. Recruiter Michaela is... Oh, Michaela. Uh, Melendi is looking to get a couple more gate guard, right? Probably for the Admiral. Tyrion is more or less fine right now. 18 out of 20. We still have to transfer the Treekin, though I'm not sure that we give these Treekin to Lariel, as opposed to these. I mean, it doesn't really matter over much, but I will uh, I will think about it. She still has to get plenty of Sisters of Avalorn since that's her thing, or at least one of her things. Anyway, uh, that's Tyrion and Co. Can anybody else move or do anything? Yavathal, obviously you can't get money for us unless there's an island in range, but there is not. And yeah, it doesn't look like there's any other way to uh, get additional cash. Meaning we can just cancel these and save the money until next turn, where we will still be able to recruit it all in one go. Probably the way to do it. All right, and I don't think we're sieging anything, or if we are, I don't remember about it anymore. So, uh, Garrison Lord not moved, and assigned skill points, hero not moved, building upgrade available, Lord not moved, outpost available. Uh, with who again? Carcass Sun. Well, I mean, maybe. Uh, the only problem is Brianna's kind of in a, you know, exposed position, is fairly likely to fall and get wrecked by something. But it would give us access to all their stuff. And we are starting to rack up allegiance with them. I guess the question is, do we actually want anything from Bretonia? But I guess we do get influence from the outpost. Yeah, fine. Just build the outpost. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Can't say no to more influence, I suppose. And, well, not so much with the elves. Ooh, the sacred pools. Now, they don't have a lot of stuff, but I do love me some Fire Leech Bolas and Coatl. I love both of these units. And go for it. Wardens of the Living Pool. I guess we do have some stuff to uh, spend money on. What the heck is this? You share an enemy with this faction that is far away. And it's red. Uh, what enemy is close to these guys that is of any kind of threat? To I think we've cleared everything. I mean, this is all tech sort of like owned by us. I'm not entirely sure what could be threatening to these guys. Odd, but whatever. And turn. And let's continue. Sc Scarby, hey, he's back. Hey, and he's got Karanak as well. Oh, the little dog is so cute. Damn, 912. Uh, uh, Karanak hits harder than Scarby does. That's pretty interesting. Uh, less melee attack, mind you, but oh, so cute. Okay, well, I'm very happy about this. It's, uh, we'll do a cinematic just for this, just so that uh, Tyrion can fight Scarby. I mean, why not? Is that a curiosity, Scarby? Do you have any fire resistance? You do not, surprisingly. But that's really good for us, since uh, we have a lot of uh, fire attacks. Away we go, I guess. I'm pleasantly surprised. To victory! To victory indeed, huh? I'm not sure I've uh, heard him say that one, at least not many times. And uh, this is my first time uh, seeing Karanak in one of my own campaigns. Uh, who's, who's the best boy? Uh, <laughs> and you guys didn't vote for Korn. I mean, granted, I, I, I did 
didn't allow it because the uh, uh, the DLC is coming. But nonetheless, uh, nonetheless, can't wait to uh, play around with the doggo uh, in a, one of my own campaigns eventually. Anyway, Emmerich will move forward. He has sighted Scarby, and Nathnir is going to get a nice Star Dragon breath uh, down, exploding a few of the rats that were for some reason in guarding Scarbrand. Emmerich will come down, and the two of them will face up against each other with Scarby losing 30% of his HP pretty much instantly. Out here, it looks like Karanak is moving forward, but it's time to start the battle off first with a couple of nice Dragon Breaths. Star Dragon Breath, and Black Dragon Breath, and Moon Dragon? Well, it's technically a Frost Dragon Breath. It's just out of a Moon Dragon. But anyway, uh, look at the <laughs> look at the rainbow of Dragon Breaths. And this is one of the nice things about having multiple different types of dragons in Emmerich's army. Uh, we can do this sort of thing, which uh, we won't be able to once all of the uh, special dragons have their own armies. Anyway, looks like a decent dragon breath takes about half HP off the Knights of the Brazen Throne. Another one hits the Brutes of the Hound very hard, and I don't know what the third one did, but I'm sure it did okay. Anyway, as soon as that's done, the dragons will come down upon poor Karanak, who will get hit really, really freaking hard and lose half of his HP. Three heads for three dragons? I don't think it's gonna work out too well, unfortunately. As a couple hits, and Karanak will simply disappear under Dragon and Dragon Prince. And there we go, speaking of the Dragon Princes, the rest of our army moves on, and Emmerich continues his duel uh, with the Scarby back here, and anyone that interrupts the duel will face the wrath, uh, well, the burning wrath of the uh, piercing bolts. All right, Scarby's still a pretty big boy, though uh, I think uh, I think Manathir could take a pretty big chunk out of his torso if he should decide to bite him. All right, Scarby attempting to spin to win, but he's got 30%, 20%, 15% of his HP remaining, and Emrick's lost about maybe 15% of his own, and has not activated his self-healing ability. Out here, the enemy army, such as it is, is pretty much overrun, and frankly, they didn't really have enough troops for us to be interested in dealing with. So it'll just be the conclusion of this duel, which will give us the long victory condition. All right, a couple more hits. It looks like Scarby begins to melt away, and with that, will drop at last. Shocked, surprised, and angry. That's pretty much Scarbrand's life in a nutshell. Unlife, whatever. Unlife, never. <laughs> what do you call a demon's life? It's not unlife because that's undead, right? Something never born, but life. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Either way, Scarby's done. His faction is destroyed, and Imric should be pretty happy about it, and has returned to full HP after a little bit of healing. Oh, one of the Brutes of the Hound was still alive, but, well, he wasn't alive for long. Alrighty, I'm really happy we got that duel because Scarbrand was our last objective in terms of uh, getting the long victory and uh, it's appropriate that uh, Imric is the one to deliver it to us. I assume that that is his last army and his faction is now destroyed, especially since he attacked us to try to reclaim the territory. So with that, the uh, long victory should be ours, assuming there's no other little uh, battles uh, to the end of the turn. I don't think anybody was in range. We got, oh, lots of damage on Imrath. Actually, quite a bit more damage on the other dragons. That's kind of interesting. Why did you get 18k and everybody else got nowhere near to the same kind of damage? Huh. Well, it is the most powerful of the uh, special dragons, so that's kind of uh, not surprising. And Imrak, of course, cleaned house, uh, just obliterating Scarby and a few of the nearby units. Anyway, uh, we'll ransom some captives as we usually do, and ah, uh, ah, uh, something's happening. Oh, <laughs> I mean, something's happening, but it's uh, nothing worth uh, nothing worth considering. Got another free seer staff of Safri, and we'll ransom those captives for more money and influence. And Goldtooth wants us to join war against the Heralds of the Tempest, which we actually will, and just probably with in, I don't know, a couple of turns? Just not right now. Give us a minute. We just, well, Arathon just uh, cleared up the, uh, cleared up the donut. And we're at war on pretty much every single border. 
which we could reduce by piecing out with the Awaken, but at this point I feel like we should just be at war with all the, uh, with all the destruction and the evil order faction at this point in time. I said at this point twice, and what the heck is with the little battles at the end of this turn? Uh, gouge a T-Frob, I don't even know who you are. Oh, okay, the demon stump, I see, I see. This was uh, the other little army that was beside Grimgor. Well, thanks for the help, Scully Knucklebreaker. Not a resolve. This is just a garrison, we'll take the money. I think the influence won't, like, the influence buff won't work for the garrison, I think, but I guess we'll see about that as well. All right, and I take it that that should actually destroy both Nakari and, uh... Scarbrand. So Scarbrand and Nakari and Kairos and Kugath are all gone. Nice. Mm. Scarbrand, Nakari, Kairos, Kugath. Who else is gone? Well, Belakor is not gone. I'm just thinking about all the uh, major chaos factions. And anyway, a military alliance with Amon of Torellasaur. There's no need. You'll be confederated shortly, I'm sure. All right, and supervisor for you, Devout for Retilni. Yeah, good. Uh, Blood Quencher for Emmerich. Weapon strength plus 5% own armies faction-wide in enemy territory. Say a solid uh, sort of trait to farm if you have the patience, but alas. I do not know or were we ever liable to encounter Scarbrand again. Ally mobilizes, ally mobilizes, exiles of corn destroyed, seducers of Slanish destroyed, free scepter of stability, a Thelmar chariot on Varaun. I don't know who you are, but no Thelmar chariot for you. Uh, uh, bound. Okay, you don't need the Seer Staff of Safari. I'm still not sure about whether we should actually be using those anyway, so yeah. Uh, just leave that alone. And other, other Trickster Shard, but not on Architect Elena. I don't even know why. Wait, why did Architect Elena get this? Wait, aren't you... Or, wait. There's an Architect Anna. Oh, and an Architect Elena. Oh, okay. I was wondering why I was so confused. And that is but one of many reasons. Uh... Yeah, so that's a you that got it. You stole it from the uh, Slaneshi. Okay. <laughs> oh, man, that was, that was confusing. Ally mission successful. Enemy killed in battle. Gift of Slaanesh removed outright with Nakari gone. The gifts are gone as well. Ambusher discovered. We don't care. Mission aborted. Kragar. I don't know who that was, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Ready for duty. A prince. Ready for duty, Sephiridin, Archmage of Light, Alariel, and Teclis are back, and there's that long victory. Diplomatic relations plus 25, allegiance plus 25, and campaign movement range plus 25. Very, very nice. All right. I'm definitely happy about that one. Now, Vladi is at war with us, and he has so, so many armies being the second strong, strongest uh, faction on the map. Now, Alistar... Okay, first of all, are the Chaos Dwarfs at war with these guys? They are. Damn. We can't really protect Grenstadt. I was going to trade it anyway, but... Mm. Svatril the Blackhearted. Are you able to attack Akinorf? You are if we leave it undefended, meaning Alistar will probably have to shadow you. Itilnai wouldn't be able to reach Astragoth. I think what we'll do is we'll pop you into ambush and set you up outside of Fyldorf. What's the corruption here? It's still pretty high, though. A little bit disappointed that Astrogod decided not to go for us here. We could attempt to move forward and get these guys fighting Alistar, which would, however, leave this area sort of open. Which kind of, which I kind of don't like, but on the other hand, I suppose we could, in a pinch, send Admiral Yabathol up here to deal with it, if it comes down to it. We won't be able to fight with Elena, though, if we try this. And we'd also be then in range of Vashnar. I don't think we'd be in range of any of the other vampire units, but we'll see. Anyway, for now, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Let's, let's do things in order, at least for a bit. Imric, you've destroyed Scarby. Oh, we still need to deal with this nonsense. Hmm. Are you guys able to reach this? In... No, 0%. Okay, wait, there might be a way that we can do this. This is, this looks out of resolvable. What about this? In space of garbage. I think what we could do, if we declare war on both of these factions, we might be able to auto-resolve them both to death rather than bother chasing them down. And I'm, I'm past wasting the time. I do see Mash One Finger out here, though. And the annoying aspect of this is we would have to chase him down. So, Imric, you're gonna go here. He'll probably sack or raise Agril Migdal, but frankly, I'm not sure that we care. Also, Gorgazan, we don't need this here, but we can rebuild that... Uh, Mm, iron structure, and let's not invest in Agril Migdal. 
It would be more annoying if this guy goes for Sunken Kernark. The thing is, he has to go for something if we take the uh, floating village, which we shall. Alright, uh, let's see about auto-resolving this then. So, we can put Rodar right here. If these guys both fight. And the only way to do this, since they're not at war with each other, is to declare war on them both and, the, and then hope that they both help each other out, essentially. Uh... Yeah, I don't want you two to be in each other's way. So you're going to go right here. Right beside Floating Village. Like so. I hope I'm not wrong about this. Then we'll... Okay, there's no really need to pop you until the last blessing or get you any levels. You, I suppose, can have a level. However, you do have the Hawkish Precision. I guess we could also start putting you through uh, Retinue Quartermaster, but only after we get that Replenished Troops, as it's much more That's valuable and important. We'll declare war on you. Shushku the Fury. Declare war. Call uh, allies, sure. And we'll do the same with these guys. Declare war. Call allies, uh, sure. They shouldn't care because it's a weak and pathetic pack. Oh, I didn't even check who you were allied with. Well, I guess it's not important now. Hey, now we're at war with more factions than we're trading with. <laughs> there it is. Uh, go for Shushku the Fury. Like so. Then auto-resolve it so that we destroy his army rather than bother chasing it. I don't want to deal with it. Oh, I don't like the fact that it's a close victory, but there's no way that we catch those beastmen and warhounds. And frankly, let's face it, it's all gores and ungores. Michaela could kill all of this by herself without really any trouble. And uh, when her army is maxed out, we'll send her to burninate the rats. There's no need for this. Out of resolve. Oh, I should have checked whether the chariot would be destroyed. Ooh, oh no. The chariot will be destroyed. The <laughs> I'm willing to bet the uh, uh, the attrition will kill it. Damn, I didn't think of that. Not too late now. Uh, let us... And the healing won't help the chariot. It'll only help this army. Well, darn. Hmm. Oh, well, what can you do? Heal up for this. And we still have to fight the rebels out here. Uh, Orc Spain, Mandalite Tribe destroyed. You know what I should have done? I should have put Rodar into March Stance, which we can no longer do. You are... Okay, wait, I have an idea. Maybe if we occupy this... Can we trade the chariot? Oh, they're just out of range of each other, aren't they? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Wait, that looked like it was in range. Huh. But they still can't trade with it. Starwood Staff, sure. Pigeon Plucker Pendant on Rodar, sure. Uh... Right again. Province secured marshers of madness. Ah, ah yes, we can't take the chariot. Beautiful. <laughs> All right, that worked out. And this way we don't have to re-recruit it. I love it. Rebuild Lost Splendor for you. All right. Now we do have to hunt uh, Mash One Finger down. Are you at war with him? E no, you are not. Okay, so you're not going to be super useful here, admittedly. Hmm. Oh well. Uh, Amrik, stick around. Alright, that looks good to me. Feyadien, you know where you're going? You're going uh, this way, passing through the Silver Road to try to get to your Lothurn Skycutters. Recruiter Fern Harvest, we will probably use to recruit stuff. Arathond. What do we do with you? Now, first of all, we do need to chase down this little army. We can have Morel maybe do it. Oh, maybe we can't. Uh... We can't take the Sword of Cain territory, can you? No, that's too well defended. Trina Kernus, however... Which is also fairly well defended. Can any of you kill this? I don't want to send Arathon out here. It's a waste of his time. He's uh, he's a busy bird man. I mean, I think out of everything here, Bordello is probably the most important target. We could get some good use out of that harbor. If nothing else. So, I hope you left out of the harbor. I assume that he did. And we could also probably tr take Leoness and then just trade it to our Bretonian friends. Uh, you won't be able to reach us in one turn, but oh well. All right, Architect Elena and Morel. Now, the thing to do with you guys is, okay, first of all, we have to figure out how many Dryads Alariel has. Okay, so she needs two more of the regular Treek, and I, I, I don't like how these have the Avalorn symbol, so I'm going to give her these types. So... And we're going to take one of these... And we're going to transfer them to a Lariel. Uh, we don't really need all the other stuff. Mm. Maybe we can just use this army as a whole army for now. So trade everything else away. Uh, lose two of the regular, or maybe one of the regular archers. 
Frankly, we should probably just have the heavy arrowhead archers anyway. Just that they have less uh, range. All right, disband this. Uh, do you have any war lines in here? No. Disband the war line. Don't really need it. Disband the spear as well. All right, like so. Then you can trade. Okay, keep the Treekin. Trade the eagles. We'll use this army to sort of stick around for a little bit. Uh, I guess keep the handmaiden. I don't know whether we're going to keep it in her in this army, but that, well, let's see. Uh, and then get a Lothar and see, get out. Oh, I don't like the one silver in guard. But oh well. And I'll say maybe we just take the silver in guard, just use the dryads for this purpose. Just have a bunch of archers. And though the dryads are fragile, they're a little bit more unique than what we've been using I before. There we go. That the looks way. good enough to me. At least to hold on for a while, and we'll get to three more of the treekin from the uh, from Avalorn, and maybe another one of the uh, dryads. Also, architect Elena, going to root marcher. Then we'll delete the Lothran Sea Guard and Silver and Guard. Don't need to pay for those, and then you're going to go southward to transfer all this stuff to Alariel. Go this way so that you don't have to travel through the territory. Ah, uh, you. Now here's a question. Ah, uh, see, if this guy wasn't blocking us, I'm willing to bet we'd be able to attack the Vanaheimlings. Could we possibly get you to declare war on the Vanaheimlings? Oh, it's not even an option. Oh, oh, that's dumb. That's dumb. So the Vanaheimlings are the vassal of Belakor, and by virtue of that, they have no diplomatic stuff of their own. But because they're not directly at war with Katep, we Katep can't declare war on them. Oh, what the heck, game? That's uh, yeah, that shouldn't be like that. But anyway, anyway, I guess assuming that this guy won't be able to reach Elysia, we're gonna march stance right here to Shrana Kurnus. Although, wait. Yeah. I'm still too weak to be of any kind of threat. What about Torakar? What do we have here? Nah, he's not gonna take that. Alright, just go into Shrine of Kurnus and we'll see where he goes after this. Try to chase him down. I see no other armies around that could be of a threat to us. There is this little army, but we're not technically at war with this little torture right now, so we can, by and large, ignore it. Belherathor, you are headed up to deal with Valkia once and for all, so go to Ashrek, where she's currently mustering a newly rebuilt force. So got a lot of mileage out of uh, Bill Harithoi. Uh, Daidrara, so you were here only to capture stuff, but I guess we can still use you for that purpose, so head out here. Yeah, I can suffer a turn of attrition, I don't care. Alright, Tech Thieves and Co., you need to start moving to where you can keep on stealing. Do we want to annoy these guys? I mean, we don't really care about whether we do or we don't, so we will. Go right here, and steal from Dargoth, or secure her influence from Dargoth, because you're not technically stealing the influence per se. Uh, go for secure trade. Alright, what about out here? We should have another influencer. Probably move all those at the same time. Just an aspect of the High Elven game. Larian, keep moving up here and just start resolving all these little garbage settlements that aren't really capable of defending themselves. We'll obviously delete this army once we no longer need it, but uh, yeah, just for auto-resolve purposes. It serves its purpose. Architect Luaron, you're good for now. Actually, are you? You are here. And we need to switch to rebuild La Splendor for this turn. And ooh, while speaking of building and stuff, the growers. Go to the Sentinels. Okay, you're at 359. I want to try to get this up to tier 5 as quickly as possible. All the other growers, move on in. Do a little, I don't know, a little seance circle thing. Uh, yeah, if I could just click ya, that would be lovely. Alright, all of you together. Anyway, one of the growers isn't a lore master. One of these is not like the other end that is you. One of them is a handmaiden. Go here. All right, all right. Now with all the growers in one place, what's our growth here at? Five twenty-nine. So three turns until tier five, and then at last access to dragon princes and star dragons, arcane phoenixes, and phoenix guard. Can we increase the growth further? Do we have any ancillaries that do anything for growth? We have control increases. More control increases would be nice if we had growth ancillaries, but alas, I don't think we do. Yeah, and control does nothing past a certain, certain point. Uh, you can, however, stimulate growth, so we can get you one point in that. You guys don't have that stimulate growth ability. You have hinder control, or spread control, rather, but that does nothing. Alrighty. Well, looks good. Now, where were we in the order? Gwyndian, you don't really need to move. We can stick around here. Admiral Astakar, I guess we can move you. There was... Yeah, there's an island right there. Alright, go grab this. 
See if we can get anything useful out of it. And then I think there was another island. Yeah, there's one right there. All right. That's what the admirals are for. Come on, materials. Let's see. Take the money. All right. Materials at sea, lost cargo, anything? Nah, we got nothing. Oh, well. But that's just the first. I got plenty more admiral work to do. Plus, the money will still be needed as we are trying to make as much use of the invocation of Assyrian as possible with that uh, construction time reduction. All righty. Gwindian, Admiral Larishian, I believe you are next. Now, I guess you can set sail again. We could... Uh, well, let me just see here. Where is the nearest islands? I don't see any around Albion. Oh, there are no islands in this area. You try to sail up here. I see no islands. What the heck? Okay, I see a single mysterious island all the way back there. This is surprising. Okay, this must mean most likely that the islands are spawning somewhere where... Okay, I see there's three here. All right, we'll send this admiral to pick them up once she has uh, sufficient troops. Recruiter Melinda, go here as well. To the edge of all Zen, although I think we're out of gate guard capacity, so we'll actually need to build one. Ooh, and I know exactly where. Uh, we'll build the gate guard capacity here at the Shrine of Cain. Come from post battle loot. Although, actually, the garrison here is already going to be super strong when the uh, Shrine of Cain comes up. Two white lines and two Phoenix guard. It's going to be damn solid. And we don't need the. Uh, the gate guard garrison. All right. <laughs> well, we could use it for a turn and then delete it later in theory. It's pretty cheap after all. Yeah, fine. Let's do this for now. I think what we can do is make use of this territory, the red territory, rather than uh, using it for any kind of money making. We'll use it for all kinds of capacities. I was going to trade it away to the lizards, but I suppose we can uh, we can actually get some mileage out of it this way. Plus, it's in a relatively safe position as well. And just use it as a not-so-much-military hub, just, you know, a capacity generator. Anyway, uh, Gwindian and... Oh, right, Admiral Larishian. I was looking at you, trying to find islands. Promptly found no islands. Well, we haven't been up here. There's a decent chance that there's some islands up there if nobody's picking them up. So, set sail. I would also suggest that there's probably a very high likelihood that uh, Capitano Sisico tries to attack you. She's got a very solid stack, after all. So you might have a fight. Which I'd be glad to see. Alrighty. Ah, there's an island right there, though. Can grab that shipwreck on the way. There's gotta be materials at sea somewhere on the map, damn it. Or Lost Cargo. Uh, Architect Loiron and Gwindian already did ya. Recruiter Zamdilla will be probably recruiting, but we'll see how much money we have at the end of this. Morella. I mean, you're kind of stuck where you are. I'm kind of going to say that we no longer need you to hold either the Ever Queen's Court Guard or the Grey. And rather than bothering to transfer them manually, we'll just re recruit them in their respective armies in a few turns. Plus, Karandkar is more than capable of defending itself at this point in time. Also, you can go into regular stance now. Alrighty. Uh, where was Morella in the order? I lost sight of you. We have, we have so many, ah, there she is. Oh, it I wasn't, it was lit up, of course. All right, uh, Lerithiriel, I pronounced your name right. Uh, you were in channeling, but there's also nothing you need to do right now. Architect Enna, let's see, do we need to build anything? I mean, funnily enough, we probably will no longer need the Watchtower at Harkaldra. I don't think so, delete it. And while you're here, just build up the promenade for really, really cheap. And then go for the... Growth. Try to get Nagarond up to tier 5. And just keep increasing that growth. It's not going to be growing too fast, at least not yet, but once we have more of these things up and running everywhere, uh, they'll all use their adjacency bonuses to buff everything up. Alright, Minds of Had Grief, yes. I love that... Uh I love that landmark. You will also need public order. Let's also go public order here, growth here, and growth here. Obviously, all the growth will eventually be replaced by the... Uh, I need to make it so when you click a lord, it automatically goes to the said lord in the list. Uh, these will be replaced by... What was I going to say? Bring me my terms. <laughs> it changed positions again. Uh, it will be replaced by something. And I promptly forgot what I was going to be talking about. 
Oh, elven artisans and elven embassies for the money generation and influence generation. Anyway, Windrina, you're supposed to transfer all those exalted units to Mr. Tyrion. And, ooh, speaking of Tyrion and co, we got other things to do. Bitter Bay. So bitter. Preeminent mage, Teclas, back up and running. Alrighty, and let's get your levels up and running immediately. Root Marcher, Shield of Safari, Sublime, Focus Potion of Karoi, Greater Ward and Ward of... Well, is Ward of Hoth that important? Alright, the good stuff. Life Leeching, Wild Heart, Life Bloom, Smoke and Mirrors, and... Uh, Kindle Flame as well. Definitely Manifold Sorcery. Then Need for Power. Uh... Yeah, I go for great mana siphon. Oh, since you've re you've been re-recruited, you start at no HP or no mana. You're gonna have to recover it all. Damn, one unfortunate aspect of it. But anyway, glamour of Hoeth, greater arcane conduit. We already did these, so I'm not gonna bother re uh, rereading them. All right, master of the order, great time negation. We got 13 points remaining. We definitely want the flames of the phoenix. So go flock of doom, regrowth spam, chain lightning. And out of these, I'm going to say net, net of Ammon. Well, actually, you want all of them. Flames of the Phoenix. All right. I'm going to say we don't need to buff his units as yet, as his ludicrous spellcasting is probably more important. Roiling Skies is probably the worst one, so we can probably ignore it. And frankly, metal shifting ain't that great either. Uh, Exorcism and SFO gives us leadership and immunity to psychology, which is also probably kind of meh. I'd rather have the magical reserves, the potential energy, the... I'll just max out all the spells. One, two, three. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to. I'd say we should still get a word of Hoeth, though. Mm. What's the spell resistance at? Fire resistance 75 because of the Arcane Phoenix. Yeah, just fine, 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 fine. I don't think he's going to be liable to miscast, but who knows. Out of these, I think the one we're most likely to be casting is Net of Amontag, but generally we're just spamming uh, Regrowth, Chain Lightning, and Flock of Doom over and over and over again. Anyway, that is Teclas. And Disciple 1. Disciple 2. And we have got at least one more apprentice to get him once we have another capacity. What? Why do we need the mages? Two reasons. One, they have flammable for his phoenixes. Two, they have this. Winds of magic cost minus 6% for all spells, own armies, and province. So it's another 12% reduction for Teclas. I don't know whether it'll make regrowth free, but it would be really nice if it did. The other disciple, the original disciple, has to set sail. And he'll take at least a few turns... But I do think he'll get there in time. All right, I know, a little bit of admin this episode, but, uh, well, it's kind of necessary this time around. Also, wait, what happened here? Oh, that was this turn we moved? Okay. Uh, we then would like to... Okay, wait, are you able to land at the Galleon's Graveyard? That's going to be a question. You can probably pick up the Mysterious Island and then not... Yeah, 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 let's do this. Pick up the Mysterious Island. Your bidding, protector of the Everqueen. Yeah. Hopefully they don't sail away. And then aggression. Ah, Lichbone Pennant. Uh, Tyrion already has the magical attacks. I'm not sure that we'll keep that on him, but it's still a good, uh, still a good pickup. Also, the Bloody Red Spot feels very appropriate for Tyrion as well. I don't think you can land. But I guess you'll be able to attack the Galleon's Graveyard directly next turn then, so... Yeah, Alright, fine. Go here. And then you and Thal are gonna go right there. And then we'll replace you with the Lariel, who's back up and running as well. Also, we got two more turns until, hopefully, the next Confederation. Uh, especially now that we can counteract the negative public order aspect of it. I replace Lord with the Lariel the Radiant. As for Lariel, get you up and running as well, in terms of your points. Now, Root Marcher is the obvious one. Isha's Blessing, most definitely, wins a magic and miscast base chance. Touch of the Ever Queen. Eh, we're not really fighting them. Well, actually, <laughs> we are fighting the Vampire Coast. Why not? Why not? Although we do have relatively limited spell points, uh, or skill points, rather. So we should keep an eye on it. Earthblood, most definitely. Light Bloom, most definitely. Shield of Safari, most definitely. Shield of Thorns, Files Protection. She's got a really good lineup of spells here, at least until she gets to this part. The second tier of her spells isn't quite as good. Arcane Unforging, Banishment, and Tempest, Cell which are... Uh, I'd rather, in fact, max these out, but only after we get this. Now, 
I'm inclined to say tradition dictates it's a big faction-wide buff. And yeah, we could buff Alario's own personal army quite a bit with the 20 armor for forest spirits and 10 melee attack for forest spirits and cooldown reduction and stuff for spells. I don't disagree. But we can still get the melee defense for Sisters of Avalorn. We still get the local recruitment duration minus two for Sisters of Avalorn in all provinces. We unlock handmaiden recruitment in all provinces and capacity, which is really hard to get for them because they need a tier four building. So I think we're still going for tradition dictates. So we'll max this out. And more relationship with the other High Elves, which means uh, Batman Confederation hopefully soon. Uh, definitely get Ward of Isha for the Ward save. We'll ignore Chaos Bane for now. But we'll max out... Mm. Yeah, still max out Shield of Thorns, Fire of Protection, and Shield of Thor... Wait, and Earth Blood, and we'll go for Evasion afterwards. Alright, looking good, Alariel. Alright, back to trying to do stuff in order, and hopefully find us a battle. Uh, Marella Larithiel, we did you. Architect Anna, we did you. Jayadras. Alright, now we do want to move you. Hmm... Yeah, all right. Uh, what we will do is, one of you, okay, Curiella, you are going to transfer stuff to you, temporarily. And you are going to lose your items. All right, and then we're going to delete you for now. We may have some use for you in the future, but for now we'll use Jay Address because she has the Hide Striker buff. Then, we're going to move her... In cha oh, this is attrition-y. I can still cross to the enemy territory. I go for it. Yeah, funnily enough, for the next battle, should we desire it, we could probably put a couple of the growers in her army as well. Hmm, maybe this one. Uh, stay in the Sentinels for this turn. Maybe two of them. I don't know. Well, we have room for two, so go here. A single turn of growth probably won't make much of a difference, but uh, I would like to knock out Kolek and the Valley of Horns. I don't like them sitting here beside us. It makes me nervous. Anyway, that was J Address, and now we have to find J Address in here somewhere. Uh, checklist. No, I think I went too far. Oh, we're nearing the end. All right, Alistar. I don't see where J Address is. Oh, there she is. All right, Alistar, I, I, I want to fight. Please get us a fight. You can't use Mulev's Blessing? Let's see if these guys are willing to fight. We also gotta be careful about taking so much damage that these guys all destroy your army, but, uh, well, we'll deal with it if it comes down to it. Yes, they will fight. Astrogoth. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you got two Death Shriekers, which ain't so great, and two Hell Cannons, as well as an Iron Demon. It should be a, a proper battle for Alistar, and without mages at that. Let's get to it. Alrighty, for the king, simple and straight to the point, Alistar is on field. No white line chariot to last, but, well, let's face it, he still looks pretty darn good with that big old great axe. I, uh, I love to see the uh, white lines sewing away with those things. And uh, we'll be seeing plenty of that here, as I expect this will be a fairly tough battle for us, as uh, the enemy outnumbers us and are led by Astrogoth himself. Anyway, uh, we're going to try to make it make our way towards the enemy army we've set up in such a way that our main line is not protected by our lions war or chariots and uh, they're going to try to make it towards the enemy army to silence that hell cannon before it does too much damage however it looks like it will get a shot off it is attempting to hit our white lines and war line chariots or war lines and chariots but fortunately, our noble will move on in, and hopefully he can distract the crew long enough for it to not fire too much. Uh, war lions and chariots are moving on in, gonna stop that iron demon from firing. See how well lions can do at uh, breaking apart a uh, demon engine. Kind of a uh, kind of a neat matchup if you think about it. That said, because this thing has a crew, let's be real here. Uh, if uh, this wasn't a game, one of the lions would just leap up here and kill both of these guys, and then uh, well, and to at least 
leave the Iron Demon to act on its own to the degree that it can. And I'm not sure what that degree is. Uh, the Hell Cannons can in fact act on their own to some degree. And in fact, sometimes, oftentimes they are trying to kill off their own crew. And they do have some movement and uh, such available to them. Not sure, not sure so much about the Iron Demon. Would it be capable of fighting a solo war against an enemy in the, uh, in the manner of a certain land raider? Anyway, oh my lord. All right, so we activate the chain lightning from the shooting star on Alistar. And uh, granted, it's only Hobgob, so they're very fragile, but that absolutely rips them apart. A bloody end for half of this army very quickly. Looks like the enemy uh, Hell Cannon is now surrounded. Astrogoth's reinforcements are on the field, so our time to kill off everything here is limited and are relatively slow moving. And I do say relatively because 41 move speed is still better. And then standard infantry. White lines are only now making their way towards the enemy. Oh, Chain Lightning is approaching. Get the heck out of there, War Lines, before it hits you. It does damage allies after all. Again, a few claw swipes from the enemy Lamasu here, and now that we've moved away from the Iron Demon, it is most likely to fire on us. Fortunately, the White Lions have arrived, and that Dwarfen Plate will uh, probably not stand up to their ministrations. That said, the high damage dealing Kadai Fireborn have been summoned amongst the White Lions, and should be able to dish out damage if they can get through the press. As it does seem like... Okay, there they go. They were attempting to target something. Hard to say what, though. Unfortunately, we don't have magical damage, so it will uh, take a little bit of effort to deal with them, but damn, White Lion's looking pretty good. 73-74 melee attack and defense on the pure main company. Out here, it looks like the Iron Demon and the Hell Cannon, or at least the Hell Cannon, has been destroyed. The Iron Demon about to follow suit, especially now that it's being sundered by the Great Axes in the same manner as the Chaos Dwarfs themselves. It does manage to peel away and get a nice shot off with its carronades into a few of our other units, which are just attempting to chase the enemy down but by the looks of it a couple more hits will bring the demon down as well will bring the demon down as well oh damn it managed to get one more shot off come on <laughs> uh good job uh, to the ai for keeping it moving somebody and just ram all your axe through one of those spokes although that probably wouldn't work so well but anyway looks like the demon is down and astrogoth's army is moving towards us we are now regrouping on the flank getting ready to send rahagra's pride together with two war line units towards the back line with those two death shriekers and the hell cannon as well we'll see how well that goes. Alstar is in the middle of the fray, fighting an enemy overseer and a bull centaur Toruk. Although the other white lines are kind of getting in his way, which is a bit of an issue when you're on foot like this. Now, well, at least uh, he, while he can't get to the Toruk, he can fight the overseer a little bit. Torque will probably uh, make quick work of a fair few of the regular white lines, however, as these two trade blows. I do like that something at least of a circle has opened up around them, though by the looks of it the Overseer will only take a couple more hits before going down. And somebody better drop him. He's very slow moving. There you go. The last guy gets him. And beautiful. And now Alistar can switch to the Toruk and the Infernal Castellan as well. And back here it looks like there was a unit of Infernal or Granite Guard rather blunderbusses which we had to peel away one of the war lines to deal with simply because we can't have those guys firing. I absolutely love the Granite Guard's aesthetics. They look pretty fantastic for a, uh, for a blunderbuss unit. I want a whole Chaos Dwarf army like those. I love the sort of bronze uh, kind of look that they've got. I wonder if it's more brassy than bronzy, I'm not sure. But anyway, it looks really nice to me. Anyway, uh, these guys are just about done and they're about to get hit by a white lion chariot and some war lines as well. While the other unit, which was damaged fighting them, will peel away and join the rest of them at destroying the enemy artillery in the background. Looks like the Death Shriekers are being destroyed rather quickly. The crew of the uh, Hell Cannon has been ripped apart as well. And by the looks of it, the enemy army is in pretty bad shape. Out here, however, we're having a nice exchange of axe on axe as the White Lions continue fighting and the enemy Chaos Dwarf Warriors. The White Lions are, however, taking damage here. 
as the enemy's own great axes are piercing our armor in the same manner that ours are piercing theirs. That said, most of the enemy lords and heroes have been destroyed, with the exception of Astrogoth, who's just sort of standing there casting and not attempting to join the fray. And we just have to get our reinforcements here to help the main line of White Lion. What should happen right about now is the Warline Chariots smash into the back line of the enemy Hobgobs and Chaos Dwarfs. Looks like the uh, Hell Cannon is jumping for joy at seeing its captors and taken out. And by the looks of it, with the charge of the Warline Chariots, the enemy army will shatter. And indeed, Astrogoth, though he was still on the field in full HP, having done absolutely nothing but cast, uh, will break with the rest of his army. I mean, he saw he saw the writing on the wall. The axes and the armor. The lions among the I don't know sheep. I don't know something something short. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we're gonna chase him down, we're gonna destroy these guys, uh, well done to Alistar, in a pretty proper fight, we certainly got damaged, our chariots did especially, as we can clearly see here, uh, these guys are down to maybe a third of their HP, a little bit over, but still have all four of their models, so they should still heal to full right after the battle. Astrogoth has been caught out here as well, and will get brought down by the noble and all the war lines. I'm wondering whether we can see his death animation on all of this, but it's kind of hard to say as he keeps getting knocked around by the mass of everything in here. Alright. Alright, how much more? Okay, 886, come on. Alright, and okay, one more hit should finish him off. I don't remember what his death animation looks like, which- oh, right, shouldn't he- sh Oh, right, the game won't show it to us. <laughs> Damn, sorry about that, guys, that was a tease. Alrighty, there we go. Absolute White Lion and War Lion and War Lion Chariot domination. There are plenty of kills on Alistar, though sadly I think most of those, if not all of them, were from his uh, bound chain lightning. I'm still not entirely sure whether we keep the shooting star on him, but uh, well, uh, the spell certainly came in handy in this particular fight. Uh, yeah, he when he's on foot, the problem is everything does get in his way. He doesn't have enough mass to push his way through the other regular white lions hmm but either way, we had his debut battle uh, with the uh, great axes of the White Lions sundering the armor of the Dewey, and now we have his, let's say, more proper debut with this big old fight as we, well, sunder the armor of the Dewey Jar. And besides, to the elves, what's one short beardo uh, compared to another short beardo? They're all the same to them, I'm sure. Anyway, uh, we're going to... Hmm, you know, we are going to suffer attrition, and while I'd like to ransom the captives, uh, since we're in attrition territory, we should probably force labor, because who knows what will attack us in the future. Now, oh, it looks like that leveled up a st Alistar. Alright, so... Oh, right, the lore of death, fire, and metal are all lures that we can use, so uh, Astrogoth's defeat trait is quite good. Uh, so he's got a sun dragon now. I'm curious, by getting the Sun Dragon, did it un- No, it still didn't unlock his White Line Chariot, it's broken. Please, game, why? Why you do this? Oh, man. Honestly, the Sun Dragon feels like it wouldn't fit in, or the, the dragons just generally feel like they wouldn't fit in super well with him. But it, it would be nice to have that uh, breath attack, I'm not sure, I'll think about it. I really wish it wasn't broken, man. Damn, plus 100% aura leadership effect. That's pretty nice. Uh, we should still probably go through Vanguard Master into Rally as we are going to have these guys be at high level pretty darn soon. You can also go into Lilith's Blessing to Channel. Most likely we'll lose at least one of each of the chariots over the attrition, but, well, again, not much we can do about it. And I wonder if Vashnar will be brave enough to attempt to attack the White Lions as well. I guess we'll see. Work bad. Ah, we're getting to some of our Kislevite friends. Wait, can you stop armies? Now, you can assault the units, but you can't stop armies, eh? Also, you need to go up here. Alright, Influencer, I'd like you to move this way. Uh... 
You have 37 turns remaining. I think you'll be fine. Uh, just, ah, there we go. Yeah, this was a good idea. You need to keep an eye on what's going on here. You know what? Epidemius is a great contact a contact immunity defeat trait, so I think we should probably try to kill him with Alistar. Frankly, I'd like this defeat trait on Imric. But he's just a little bit far. Anyway, where is Alistar in the list? Where were we? Uh, Apprentice Muriel doesn't need to move. Wait, I think I skipped Alistar. Oh, there he is. All right, Didrarus, Admiral, Yavathol, you need Recruit. Frankly, you should probably be over here, but whatever. Uh, Admiral Hulalian. Oh, we should check whether there's more Admirals available. We want those materials. Let's see. All right, so what do we have here? Dashing... Through the... Hmm. It's a solid amount of buffs for a cavalry-centered army. However, I just think that... I don't know. We'll have plenty of cavalry between Emmerich and Tyrion, so it's not super needed. And the rest of this is kind of meh. So I think we'll ignore it. Princes, what about you all? And what do we have here? Dragonwild, Vigorous, and Doctrinal. We... <laughs> uh, Dragonwild is great, but... Once again, we have we have Imric, so why would we need it? You are going to be possibly recruiting, depending on what our money situation is like at the end of the turn. Tech Thief, get the Tech Thievery. Good. And we are running out of things to move, which means building, building, and then ending the turn. You can go to the Veil of Woe. Good. Who's up next? Another influencer. Ah, you can level up though. Get yourself another specialist and bullgrog. Uh, you can move up here, just so we have a little bit more vision and failure. Typical. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's uh, to be fair, it's kind of hard to tell who's actually failing because they're all named influencer, but nonetheless, ninety-two. You shouldn't fail. I think, did it say zero percent chance? No, I think it was zero percent chance to be wounded. Still a small chance to. Uh, uh, to lose, you can still get assault units as an assassinate and whatnot. Alrighty, I think that was all the main moves, assuming that we're not besieging anything. Uh, Techless. Alright, so just to double check, we don't have any more mage capacity, is that correct? You require assistance? We do not. Alright, but well, we're working on it, we're working on it. And Techless has to recruit stuff anyway, so it's gonna take a while. Uh, fortunately, he does recruit them relatively cheaply, and by them I mean Phoenixes at only 675, so two of these, two of these. And obviously we'll get... one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, perfect. Uh, seven Swords Masters, seven Phoenixes, two more Arcane Phoenixes, once we unlock them, which hopefully will be soon. And uh, that... yeah, I can't count. That's 14 units, plus two mages, plus three Lore Masters. And then, uh, I think that makes 20. Yeah, that makes 20. And if it doesn't, well, I'm bad at math. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see about Diplomacy, shall we? Let's diplomacy. Uh, re <laughs> I can't believe I didn't, I didn't make that stupid ass joke before. Uh, Camry, you're fine. Lore, Lauren, Argolan, Ivras, Tiranag. No, no, we're not peacing out with anybody. It's far too late for that. We're, uh, we're kicking chaos out. Okay, we do have to go through every single territory, though. You will next turn... Ah, see, this is why. You'll be ready to upgrade to Tier 4 at the ancient city of Quintex, which is great. Uh, Plane of Bones, you are waiting to Tier 5 up, and then we'll move the growers there after needed. Tyrant Peak, you're fine for now. Let's upgrade the manor, Aetain. You are in the recruitment stance, because you actually do need to be recruiting. And you, just to double check... Yeah, okay, you know what? Go here. I'd love for you to be recruiting, but uh, we do. Yeah, I guess we could build one here if we wanted to. I did say I wanted Airtain to be a sort of military hub, but we'll see if we have enough money left to recruit some stuff. Uh, Don's Landing is fine for now. Ekrand, let's upgrade that public order building. Though the public order is nice and it's pretty good as well now. But anyway, uh, Dedrock Gap. Mount Gunbad, nothing to do there. Nagashazar, you're in recruitment stance and or commandment, and that's where you should be. Build up the Elden Fairground, Promenade, and growth structure, and more growth. And the rest of this is looking good, but we'll keep the rebuild Lost Splendor so that we can, well, rebuild that Lost Splendor. Uh, Bleak Coast. Nowhere. Ooh, wait. Wait, 46. Why did we... Ah, that's why. I was wondering why our money jumped up so high. Vol's Anvil has at last finished. We were at like 36, I think, uh, thousand gold last turn or something along those lines. 
Which explains it. Now we just gotta make sure nobody takes this. The garrison's kind of mad, but anyway. Alrighty. Arnheim. Everything's being upgraded to tier 3. That's where we were, I think. Wait, I already did Desolation of Nagash. Oh, did I go up instead of down? Maybe that's what I did. Alright. Alright, Crooked Fang Fort. Yes to the Elven Artisan. I have a Lorn. Yes to the tier 3 Lumber Yard. Yes to the tier 3 Growth Thingamajig. And... I believe that's all we can do. So, we can switch you to Banish Corruption. Blood River Valley, you are going to be upgraded next turn. Let's get that promenade up and running. And we'll need this to recruit the Shadow Warriors. And with all of the other stuff. Uh, definitely Gem Cutter. Definitely Wine. And definitely Promenade. Alright, you're easy. Laneshi Giggle. And then we can go into the Banish Corruption again for you. Alright, how much money? Oh, good lord. <laughs> We have a lot of territory, uh, admittedly. I mean, we're a world-spanning empire at this point, just as it should be. Uh, you're good, Planet Dogs, Altar of Ultimate Darkness, yes, upgrade to the next tier. And I guess we'll go for the Elven Fairground and the Promenade and the Growth. Alright, now we have a little bit of money remaining, and even though there's probably other stuff that we'll want to build and upgrade, I think we'll skip it. For the purpose of actually being able to recruit a few more things. Namely... Alright, first of all, Recruiter Zamdilla. Now, you are marching down here... wait. Well, where do we have access? Do we have the dragon building here? We do not. So in order to build dragons, we have to build them either out of the Fortress of Vorag or out of the Black Fortress. You are currently in... Ash Ridge Mountains. Let's go here for a second. Alright, so here you'd be able to get two Sun Dragons. Oh, they're hilariously expensive, though. Uh, what about here? Hmm. Honestly, they're so expensive right now. I think I'd rather do the Lothurn Sea Guard because we can sort of get them moving immediately. And we gotta wait for Teclas to recruit his stuff anyway. Yeah, let's do at least some of the Lothurn Sea Guard. So, you're going to go... Okay, wait, how many do we have here? Oh, we'll also need a Noble for you. So... Let's get a noble. Uh, probably don't want to pay for one. Let's just get a cheap regular noble. I don't want to waste influence on you. Unless there's something decent in... No, not really. Okay, hopefully one of these guys aren't covered. Yeah, this one. Control minus two. Who cares? Uh, 3,000 gold. Good lord. That's uh, it's a little much, game. It's a little much. Ben rare. Get on field, replenish those troops. You're going to be needed for the sea guard. And go hard to hit. Alrighty, then... We have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. Meaning we need to build at least one more Lothan Sea Guard with shield. I didn't really do a count, but whatever. Uh, one, two. We're gonna be just short, aren't we? One, two, one, two, and three. That's seven. So two and three. Two, seven, and three, seven. Seven and seven and two and three. Yeah, that's it, that's it. All right, Admiral Yavithol, you, I guess, could... I mean, probably won't make enough of a difference. Just stay here, just stay here. All right, and with 94 money, we have none remaining in order to recruit anything else. I would like to check whether there are missions, however. These could come in handy. There's a bunch of stuff I want from various allies. Especially the Heralds of Ariel to get those last Hawks. Definitely want to get a War Drum. I'm thinking a War Drum might also be good specifically for Alistar. And buff up those white lines even further with 24 armor. But anyway. Uh, who's the nearest and most likely to be destroyed here? Probably a full stag belonging to Steinberg. Let's accept that one. Last Defenders. Where's Vlad? Let's mix it up. You can do Vlad. Western Provinces. Uh, Fritz, Vlad, and I guess take Steinberg as well. Oh! Looks like Orion is indeed moving. I'm willing to bet he'll lose his army, though. Who's Karan Kurgan? Oh! There's somebody out at sea here. You know what? I'm gonna take this. Uh, no, nah, you know what? It's probably a waste. I'm gonna take Steinberg. Okay, we really need to kill Steinberg. Actually, no, you take Vlad. Uh, everything else, I think, is fine. Alright, let's end the turn now. Uh, Garrison or non movement sign skill points in the turn. I don't think we're sieging anything, are we? Well, I guess we'll find out next turn. Ally mobilizes against Starmy. I don't even remember who was ordered to do that. Eltharian, you would like a military alliance? No need. We'll be confederated in a turn or so. Eatsa, Blessed Dread, Thousand Miles, Clan, Pestilence, Scryer, still one of the factions we are still not at war with. Oh, 
Pirates of Sortosa were not at war with either, but they're they're, they're kind of dead. <laughs> or they will be relatively shortly. And ah, there's Steinberg moving in to defend Wissenberg. And you know what I should have done? I should have traded the uh, this territory to our Imperial friends. There's Vladdy, probably shadowing Orion. I'm not attacking him, surprisingly. Mash one finger. You are indeed going to attack this place, but we don't really care. Uh, Imrek will hunt you down, and you're going to sack it rather than take it, which was the smart move. Ah, Capitano Sisico, you will indeed attack us, and... I think this is a solid enough stack. Hyper Elite, uh, probably as good a stack as we will ever encounter of the Vampire Coast, plus very high veterancy on top of it, that this will actually be a fairly tough fight for the Lothurn Sea Guard. Yes. All right. I think it's worth fighting then. We'll pop a uh, we'll pop a Rangers standard on you, and uh, well, let's see if we can manage to pull this off. I think the game is lying with us. There's a lot of range firepower to the enemy, to the two deck gunners and the carronades that we have to watch out for. Plus the Necrofax. Go. All right, here we go, and this is both the great thing and the not so great thing about these little, uh, about these little rogue fleets. They will annoy you. They will attack you, and uh, well, they certainly have potential to destroy relatively unprotected armies. And that said, we'll see what we can do. Uh, granted, the enemy army is about what. Maybe three to four times as expensive as ours is due to their eliteness, so we will have to be careful. Also, I have never noticed this thing up here. I really wish I could zoom further to see exactly what's going on up there. See a, a glowing sort of skull with some LEDs in it, and some sort of structure. The architecture looks dark elven to me. But I'm not entirely sure. It could be a chaos structure of some kind as well. Just need to get a little bit closer. I don't see the telltale sort of purple braziers and uh, uh, sort of high tower spikes that the uh, Dark Elves like to do. Hmm. Anyway, neat stuff. How are we doing back here? A uh, little bit of a shootout has begun as our artillery are launching their piercing bolts against the enemy and targeting specifically uh, the enemy deck gunners. We have also moved forward our uh, lord here, Admiral Larishian, who is attempting to go towards the enemy carronades. I uh, really don't want those carronades firing at our uh, eagle claw bolt throwers, especially considering the carronades can outrange them and decent likelihood I'll damage them as well. Fortunately, they're super fragile, and as Larishian moves in... It's also appropriate that, uh, well, this is our Lothran Sea Guard, or one of our Lothran Sea Guard armies, so the enemy admiral is fighting one of our admirals. All right, charge on in, break that crew, break those carronades, don't let them fire on the rest of our army. And at the very least, it looks like the Griffin is pretty adept at this. The Griffin has higher splash damage than the uh, Great Eagle does, so it's uh, quite adept at mincing piles of infantry like this. And by the looks of it, the first of the enemy crew is melting away. We're also doing decent damage to the enemy deck gunners, though it looks like the enemy has begun to fire back. The Necrofax Colossus taking shots, having 26 kills to its name off of this unit of Lothar and Seaguard. Looks like the enemy Sirenes uh, have also closed the distance as well, and an SFO uh, they, and like all ethereal units, have 75% physical resistance. It's a devastating amount of physical resistance to deal with. More importantly than that, they've distracted us long enough for the Death Guard, probably still the coolest looking infantry unit in the game. Definitely up there with the Infernal Guard uh, to make their way in. I'm a little biased towards the uh, Vampire Counts and Coast, as you guys may well know. Uh, or have I ever mentioned that? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> these guys charge on in, and it looks like they deal plenty of damage to the Silver and Guard already, and they're not the only Depth Guard units on the field, as another unit with, with those twin axes is getting ready to attack. Out on the left flank, it looks like the Mongols are making their way in, but it looks like I don't think the Silver and Guard are going to hold these guys back. 
they're here to try to act as sort of anchors for our line for this exact sort of situation where we meet much more elite units but this is something the depth guard are very much adept at the silver and guard get absolutely demolished uh, even with the depth guard having taken a lot of damage from the range so it looks like we're going to have to send some lothern sea guard into melee to block those depth guard off and see how long we can hold the rest of the army is continuing to move in and we have switched our targeting to the necrofex colossus larishian has done a good job and killed off both of the enemy artillery pieces and the uh, our own artillery pieces have taken out, out the enemy deck gunners the necrofex colossus however will continue to fire away at us with its a sort of multi-cannon fire All right, I wanted to see it uh, fire away, but we're probably going to keep staggering it with the uh, with the artillery pieces. And there it goes. I love these frickin' things. Alrighty, well, it's gonna fire on us, and by the looks of it, our front line is very much near to collapse. More goals working together with the Rotting Leviathan, and those Depth Guard have destroyed another unit of our melee. Once again, can't underestimate the uh, Twin Axes or the Depth Guard in general, especially in SFO as they're a little bit too fragile in vanilla, but uh, quite a bit uh, quite a bit stronger in SF. Uh, appropriately so, as every single Depth Guard is a vampire. Alrighty. And it looks like we've had to move in another unit of uh, Lothurn Seaguard to hold back the tide. Uh, looks like, ooh, the enemy has taken damage and activated their uh, sort of uh, explosion ability. I don't remember what it's called, but uh, doesn't really matter. Now, this Depth Guard unit is finally nearly out, but it looks like yet another unit of uh, Lothurn Seaguard is nearly out of the picture. All right, certainly taking some effort. And ooh, the enemy has brought along a unit of a gunnery mob uh, and crabby boys. And I love that unit as well, it's a fantastic unit. Plenty of damage, very difficult to deal with. And it looks like yet another of our Lothran Seaguard units breaks and we keep moving the back lines in to rotate. And it does look like the Death Guard have managed to hack and slash their way through our lines in order to actually reach our artillery crews. So great job to those Death Guard. Unfortunately for them, the rest of their army has not fared all that much better. Though they did manage to send one, two, three, four, and by the looks of it, well, I'd say four, three to four from the Depth Guard, and then... now well, this one is also kind of fighting the Depth Guard. The monsters did do some damage to our other units, but uh, let's face it. Not as threatening. At least not to this kind of situation, though I'm sure they got decent kills as well. Alrighty, and just a couple more hits as the Depth Guard will melt away. A couple of last shots to send off one of the other enemy units. Why is this unit out here, you ask? They were chasing around Larishian after she killed off the uh, uh, the enemy artillery pieces. So these ones were never able to contribute to the battle. Just a single unit of handgunners, mind you. And even if they did get into range, we simply would have killed them off with our uh, concentrated arrow fire. All right, well, a very nice, unexpectedly uh, difficult battle for our Lothurn Seaguard. Uh, granted, we could have used a mage here, but the uh, sort of patrol Seaguard armies don't have mages, and it is bound to give us some nice battles like this. Alrighty, there we go. Very, very thankful to Capitano Sisico for the great battle there. It's also nice to see the Lothar and Sea Guards struggle a little bit, and admittedly, I'm a little biased. Um, but the uh, uh, but watching those Depth Guard with uh, twin axes cut through the Silver and Guard, heedless of their 74, whatever it is, melee defense, and then cut through the Lothar and Sea Guard like a knife through butter is just it's just fantastic. I love of the frickin' Depth Guard, so, and good job to them. And uh, once again, our Sea Guard armies don't have a mage accompanying them because we don't have the capacity for it, and uh, so it does make sense that uh, they are uh, taking damage because of it. Uh, I'd love to heal, but I think at 4,000 gold, I, I just can't say no to that, so ransom captives again. 
And once again, I love the fact that the freaking uh, rogue fleets, they'll attack the player uh, just at any freaking opportunity, but they will completely ignore everybody else. And <laughs> they're just generally an annoyance. And ooh, look who's coming near. Huh? Hmm, I wonder if we'd be able to sally out and kill you. We would, but then we would be in range of Karan Kurgan Tamer. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to see what we uh, what we can do about that. And ooh, we also got to trade. Brrr, oh wait, Blacklight Tower for Circle of Destruction, which should complete our Clark Karan province. I'll do that between the episodes as well as uh, some of the admin. Anyway, until my ambush foiled, settlement sacked, Agrul Migdal will deal with it. Faction destroyed. Spell Radiant Gem of Hoeth. Uh, we could put a bunch of spell stuff on uh, these guys because you don't have a mage. Certainly potential for it, but uh, you do got your moon dragon now. So there is that. Though you are going to be a bigger target for potential uh, gunfire. Gotta watch out. Uh, what is this? Influencer minus 15 melee defense. Man, this is so not worth a damn. I'll lose so much melee defense just for a tiny bit of uh, weapon damage. But, oh well. You don't really care. I guess we could send you out here to Orky territory where we don't have a lot of chaos corruption. It's not like you're... Yeah, fine. Go out here. Uh, not to the fire mouth, but to... Wait, where's Kolak? Don't tell me he ran. No, he's still right here. Alright, so we should potentially, could potentially, have the Lothran Sea Cutters, Sky Cutters, cut him down uh, next episode. And I do mean next episode, because folks, we are out of time, and I'm obviously going to call the episode here. Long victory has been achieved. Ooh, Throt. You've taken the Silver Pinnacle and Kazidur Kolaske. We really need to get somebody up here before Karakadrin is completely destroyed. Also, turn 102, Karakadrin is still at tier 2. What the heck is going on with these guys? Tier 2, Karakadrin, their freaking capital. Uh, is it is it because we made them our ally that they became kind of mad? I mean, it's not like they're a super weak faction. They're tier 3-ing up everything in the Blasted Wastes, and the Silver Pinnacle actually had decent defenses as well. Huh. Kind of odd. Well, we'll probably transfer them a decent bit of that territory back. Anyway, folks, as I said, uh, we're out of time. I'm calling the episode here next time. Well, we're at war in a massive border, and said war will continue. Hopefully we'll complete the recruitment of... Why the heck is Azazel down here? Uh, hopefully we'll complete their... How? Oh. Gee, opportunity for Emmerich to kill him if he keeps moving southward. Uh, opportunity to... Or hopefully we'll recruit uh, the uh, army of Teclas to completion. Selena Shigigal. Uh, next time around, we'll have Ilariel and Tyrion hit the Galleon's Graveyard with a probably pretty darn big old battle. Uh, full stack, plus lots of defenses there as well. And just keep fighting on while well, every freaking front. It's an amazing late game so far. Uh, don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, as since we've achieved long victory, they will determine how long we proceed with this campaign. I'm still very much into this, so uh, yeah, but anyway, all glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.